This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Hotels, current and future configurations. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It is late June 2021, we've now got early access to the MI24P Hind and we're going to do an initial cockpit familiarization video. It's an initial video because the simple fact is we don't have any information. There's almost nothing in the early access official guide. We've managed to source some real life manuals for the Hein, but they're all in Russian. And we can't get them converted. There is a video out there that a real life guy has done of a real life Hein, and we'll link that in the video description. If you want to go and watch that, that's fine. And then when we get the full documentation in six months, a year, whenever it comes, we'll go back and we'll make this video properly. We'll start in the pilot's cockpit, then we'll jump in to the operator's cockpit in the front. So very rough layout. Left circuit brake panel here, left panel, left console here, uh, front left panel, flight instrument panel, armament panel, gun sight, that's the ASP-17, front right panel, right panel or right console, and right circuit breaker panel so if we start the circuit breaker panels i'll say i'm not going to go through every single switch because well to be honest i don't know what they all are but the way that we've been taught to use this aircraft is that you don't use all of these switches individually anyway they are labeled and they are all modeled but the way it says in the small manual that we've got is that you just turn each panel on with this lever and that's it you just leave it have you ever seen any example so far in the information we've got that says press the circuit breakers individually. No. Yep. So that's it, literally. Turn circuit breaker left panel on, turn circuit breaker right panel. There you go, that's an easy start. I've just noticed for the first time that I can actually look behind myself, RC, and see into the cabin or whatever, yeah. you know, where the, where, the, where, the, where the cargo is. I've never seen that before. How interesting. Oh. Still a little rough in there, but I think it'll Watch get out. better. So eventually it's going to probably have troops and stuff like that. I think that'll be awesome. Uh, if we look right above the right circuit breaker panel, there's actually a bunch of little browny red things. They're not modelled in any way because you can't click on them or move, remove them. They look like relays to me. Any idea what those are, purely out of interest? I believe are also uh, circuit breakers. The circuit breakers. Um, they have a different type. So if you look at them, there's a little button in the middle. Yeah. And they're labelled 552. Those are the amps, yeah. I believe. The button in the middle is this, the uh, reset. Right. So it will pop out if it goes bad. Right. They're not your. Right. They're not modeled. Right. Very cool. Okay. Well, that's half the cockpit done already. Which I'm not sure why they are not modeled because all part of the should be. Uh, by the way, I'm going to have my these this stuff turned off for now, and we'll come back to it and do that next. According to the manual, the little red knobs that I see are called the fuel shut off. Uh, they're called right engine stop. Here, you happy with that? Right. So obviously, left engine, right engine and to do the actual fuel cut off you pull them up and that's it they will cut the fuel off uh, moving forward we've got what they call the throttle levers here so individual throttle lever left engine individual throttle lever right engine i've not found a regime where i'm told to adjust these from their standard position have you ever actually touched them before i haven't but the only thing i can find in doing testing and playing with the helicopter is that if you lose an engine you can throttle the good one up to 100% so you can maintain your flight. Right. Uh, and uh, maintain your uh, rotor RPMs. Okay, so other than uh, emergency use of the loss of engine, we just, we're just told to leave them in this kind of neutral position. Next, let's go to left panel, and this is a big one. So we're going to start with this panel here. We don't have a name for this panel, but let's just crack on with it first. Cabin light. So the cabin, you know, the cargo kind of cabin where the, where the troops would be, we have here a cargo lighting switch. Uh, get back down there. Also back there, we have a cargo floodlight, if you like, white or blue. In terms of the cockpit, we have a floodlight, white, off or red. You can't really see it in the daytime, take my word for it. A flight recorder here. As far as we're aware, it doesn't actually do anything in DCS. None of the flight recorders do at the moment. Next is the Russian equivalent of bitching Betty. Who, who are we calling her? Bitching Ivanovich or something. I don't, I don't know. We don't know her name yet. We can turn her off, we can test her, or we can repeat her last command. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it doesn't work for me, it never has, but it does work for RC. He can hear. In a hot start, it doesn't seem to do anything, but in right. a cold start, it does. 
Right, there you go. Okay, fine. Next, in terms of uh, kind of warning, indicator, caution type lights, do we want them day mode or night mode intensity? We can test the lights. King, we'll be using that to look at the million and five lights that are available here. Next, blinker. Do we want said caution lights to blink when they're you know showing their caution or not to blink? Next, we're stepping down to the radio and navigation set here. So first, we've got the switches to turn on the net one and two for the SPU-8, which is gonna to relate to this panel down here, which I would describe as our main communications panel. It's gonna be the hub to select which actual radio or radio navigation we want to use. More conventionally, we have power switches to the basic radios. The R863, if you like, is our main VHF radio actually UHF as well in DCS we have the Yadro here which is in fact I'll show you that's the 863 that's the 863 there we'll come back to this is the Yadro here which is this guy here this is the 828 back up that guy there radar altimeter power on there in terms of Doppler navigation this 15D now we're not entirely sure whether this is powering on our Doppler navigation here or our Doppler navigation in terms of our hover indication here that's as far as we've got I'm afraid with that next one officially this says airspeed to disk so airspeed to the Doppler navigation system here now the strange thing is if we turn it on there our Doppler navigation actually stops working properly at least in terms of the movie map it actually inverts the movements of the movie map so I don't know if that's working properly or not we just can't find enough information about that for the time being we've learned to keep it off anything to add to the disc or the Doppler RC no I don't know much about I think the Doppler turns just turns it on the whole system yeah okay uh, next two main gyros I call them left and right but they're actually one and two uh, we need to be on obviously next is the Graben course system um, we can have that on the actual panel for setting that is down here it's something that we're going to use during our cold start and we haven't found any use other than cold start at the moment next our rwr similar to the one in the uh, mig 21 system if not the same power it on or off and turn the audio on and off for it there in fact why don't we just power that up the IFF transponder which i don't know anything about in this aircraft but i'll be interested about finding out which modes it can handle in the future power on and off probably not modeled at the moment in dcs but stand to be corrected relating to the iff we've got a panel here where we can choose different options and we can press buttons we're 99 percent sure that none of that's modeled at the moment also referring to the recording system audio visual recording system we've got we've got a series of controls or a panel here uh, mc61 i think is there again 99 percent sure nothing at the moment is modeled there next in case of an emergency where we need to erase the iff information the codes which are obviously critically important not to fall into enemy hands we don't really know how this works because well, no one knows but we've got the ability here to press iff transponder disaster switch on we know that you can in these aircraft erase the iff codes and it's probably something to do with that ability we've got the erase button there is that modeled uh, no <laughs> it's definitely not uh, next, we've got signal flares, normal for Russian slash Soviet aircraft of this time period to use signal flares. Um, you know, it means that you can communicate with your other guys without uh, radio signals. We can turn on the bank here, we can turn on the bank here and fire the flares of that particular colour. Next is the R828, the backup radio in DCS. Channel selector up to nine, I think it is. The frequencies are set in the mission editor and that's the only way we can do it at the moment. We have a volume switch for the audio. We have the squelch on or off, other way around. And we have the auto tuner here, which tunes into the fine tunes to the frequency. So you would choose your channel, press and hold, auto tuner there. You see the tuner working. It's tuned into radio or whatever that is now. Next, uh, radio navigation. We've got the, if you like, backup radio navigation set here called the Arc U2. For the Arc U2 to operate, we have to link it to another radio so we can link it to the the uh, compass mode of the r828 which is that one here or we can link it to the compass mode of the r uh what's the 852 which i think is this guy down here we'll come back to you'll link it to a radio so it knows which frequency to you know to look on 
Um, if not, it will be in com, com mode here where it you know, won't function. In terms of the actual set itself, we can have sensitivity, high or low. I think this is for FM, by the way, uh, the U2. So whereas the ARC 15 will come to, will be in the AM, this will be in the FM. Again, I stand to be corrected. There's no documentation of this, but just from my other helicopters that I've studied. Power on or off. We've got loop left and right here. It's not modeled in DCS looping, but it's something you would do to increase, you know, get a better signal, I think, in, in real life. Again, never done it, obviously. Next to the APU and engine start stop. So we've got, in terms of the APU, the EGT, the engine gas temperature in hundreds of degrees Celsius. Also the air pressure for the bleed air here in, let me think, that's kilograms per centimeter squared is the measurement that they use. Next, we've got the actual panel. In fact, let me just get a little bit. Left side is APU, right side is engines. So we can start the APU, we can stop the APU in terms of operation. We can do a start, or we can do a crank, which is a way of, kind of turning it over and cooling it down, full start. We haven't managed to find any literature on that, I'm afraid. On terms of the engines, do we wanna you know, start left or start right? Uh, we can start or crank again, crank being the same thing as cranking the this guy here. We can start here and if we want to terminate the start, we can stop starting there. And we've got, uh, if I can find it, our light test. Zap, you can see the individual lights that you've got there that you're going to see at different regimes. While we're here, we've got this switch, which isn't modelled and doesn't do anything, so I shall ignore it. Next panel along, we've got window spray. It doesn't do anything at the moment, as far as we can see. We've got heating here, which are not modelled, these switches, at the moment. We've got the wipers. You've got to click on the actual word off or start, speed one, speed two, and reset. And we can see that. Ba -ba -ba up there wiping which is pretty cool next fan it's just the fan at the top right of the for the pilot to keep him cool uh, lighting exterior tail strobe on or off blade tip lighting on or off we've got no, uh, formation lights bright dim or off we are coming on to the uh, fuel now so we've got two feed tanks one and two we can turn them on or the valves on or off fire but we've got a uh, fire valve for the left and for the right. We've got fuel delimiter valve. I just don't know. Uh, do you know uh, out of interest, do you know what a delimiter valve is, RC? I do not know what that does. Roger, okay. I can't find anything about it. Really. We just, if, for the engines to work, we need it on, that's all we know. Exterior tank, fuel tanks, if we got them, then we need, you know, to have the, uh, have the switch on. We've got uh, the fuel tank pumps. Uh, interestingly, four, five, one and two no three so i've never understood them but anyway they're there and you need to have them on we've also got a whole bunch of indicator lights you can see they're required at different points and that is that panel next radio the jardro radio i think this is a radio that's actually used for super long range i stand to be corrected uh, but you can use frequencies where you can bounce off the ionosphere Anyway, um, master mode, if you like, off, STB. Don't know what STB is, I'd like to know. AM, obviously, amplitude modulation. Squelch, we've actually got a rheostat for the squelch, which I've never seen before. So, it makes me think that you have to, for some reason, to almost tune the squelch, which will be interesting. I can tell you, because we have mono radio. So what it does is it basically, it, it increases or decreases your sensitivity to squelch. To squelch it. It, it all the way till you turn it off and you have no squelch on. Right. It's interesting that it's just for that radio and not the others. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's because it's high frequency. That's actually not. This is low frequency. This is uh, oh, I'm maximum. Sorry, looking at the... Yeah, this is Dejardo is low frequency. Which oh, yeah, I, yeah, think, yeah. I think that's why it's the long range radio. So this is one you could potentially use yeah. to talk hundred or whatever hundreds of miles away. Uh, but anyway, the, the the full answer is I don't really know. I apologise. We're just we're kind of guessing here. Uh, we can change the frequencies, obviously with these various knobs. Let's leave them alone. Uh, we can test if required. We've got our volume, and that's it. It does work. It's modelled to a degree in that you can use it to talk to guys. Next, the Arc 15, our primary radio navigation suite. Uh, it's a really good set. Volume knob whether you want to use voice or CW and I apologize I completely forgot but I just always leave it on voice uh, we've got our control button 
sorry I don't know what it does I've got no documentation but as far as I'm aware it doesn't do anything we can switch between channel 1 this selector here or channel 2 this selector here and I know that we use this so we can use uh, twin inner and outer marker beacons for landing which is uh, an approach which is cool looping is looping the radio uh, looping the antenna not modeled in DCS master mode off compass which is your main mode antenna and loops are things that you again would have to do in a real radio or real radio navigation you don't have to do in DCS because that level is just not simply not model then thank you lucky stars it's not trust me next the frequency selectors for channel 1 and channel 2 and you can change obviously the you know kilohertz uh, however there okay uh, that's that lot next we've got we've talked about this before the Graben set and I don't know enough to even start talking about this I we know that you have to calibrate it during our cold start procedure but otherwise I've got no information on it at all anything you want to add RC nothing like that Roger. Next is what we're going to call our SPU-8 and if you like our primary radio hub it's going to allow us to choose which radio or radio navigation set we A use actively and B will use passively listen to. Um, you can see the names of all the different sets there. And we've got a network switch at the bottom which must be related, I haven't seen this before, it must be related to these two guys here, Network 1 and Network 2. I'd love to know if anyone out there knows more about the network switch channels one and two i don't know i don't think you know do you rc no, no. circular don't know what it does almost certainly nothing uh here we've got we switch between our intercom system in our helicopter and ground crew or radio i don't know if it does anything i doubt it master master radio volume that will affect all volumes of all radios essentially uh, it does work it's just the models doesn't work at the moment and our intercom system which as far as we're aware isn't modeled in DCS in this helicopter at the moment cabin pressure this is of course a pressurized cabin which is interesting for a helicopter and we can pressurize it by turning it anti-clockwise or vice versa so the pressurization is not necessarily for altitude but it's to keep out uh, chemical and biological warfare right so so, you know, like a tank right you pressurize a tank yeah. not because you need it but it means that no air will come in as such Right, so that's that's more why it's pressurized rather than an uh, an altitude issue. Roger. Although we have been asked to actually do some altitude tests, which I'm looking forward to because let's see if that works. <laughs> <laughs> Next down here, uh, static system. So that means the uh, you know the pitot tube that detects the pressure and the speed. We can have both combined, right only or left only in case of fault. Next, we've got our third radio communication set, the eight five two of the R eight five two. And you can see channel selector and volume. As far as we're aware, that is not modeled in DCS. And um, before we go further up, we've got the eight, oh, I've forgotten the numbers, 853? 863, 863. Our primary radiation, primary radio, primary radio communication set. It's based on a preset system and you set them in the mission editor uh, up to 19, so 20 in total. Uh, it's, it's a configurable FM AM set, uh, guard monitoring on the, on the emergency frequency. ADF because we can actually use this for um, automatic direction finding although I think in DCS that's not modelled I think uh, in terms of the 863 squelch on or off obviously and our volume for that set also we've got a dust filter here uh, we turn the dust filter on now everyone seems to have a different idea about this some people say you need it only on for startup some people you need it on for flight I don't know any feedback on that RC? Given the configuration of the switch it's probably only on startup because it otherwise bad, it would it? be covered. Me. That sounds about right then. Why you need a dust switch for startup, I don't know, but that's just how it works. Next, uh, incredibly complex fire protection system. In fact, on the left of that, we've got a SNAR switch. Press that there, and that fires our countermeasures, our flare or our chaff. And here's one thing I'll see. How badly is that designed? So to fly flares or your chaff, which is something you may need in an emergency, you've got to go all the way down here, pass these buttons, and press that under this little rail. I don't get that, that's crazy. Next, fire protection, and this is whoosh, way beyond me. Again, we've got nothing to tell us what goes on here. One thing I can say is you have obviously a lot of fire extinguishing control compared to a fully automatic system, although I think we have an automatic system as well. Do you agree with that? Yes, I believe there's, uh, it is automatic. Okay, so we've got different extinguishers we can fire on engines, APU number two, gearbox two. Uh, we can turn off audio warning here. 
and different fire detectors that we can use and different squibs we think that you can choose but is way out of my understanding. Anything anecdotal you want to add to that panel? Yeah, I know there's two squibs per channel. Or, yeah, but I don't know how you... We don't know enough about it. We don't know enough about it. We don't know how much is modeled and... Upper buttons are one, lower buttons are two. Yeah, agreed. Next, left front panel upper. Lights, taxi lights on off. This guy here, I've actually just noticed for the first time. Navigation code light oh that's interesting do you think that you could maybe beep out a morse code or something on the nav lights i wonder what that is i think the intent and i'm not sure if it's working or not is that it gives you different flash patterns uh navigation lights bright or dim or off gods landing lights uh, i see never mind sorry it's a but so yeah i think you can do morse code on your nav lights yeah that's I was looking at something else. The landing lights will control off and retract. Any idea what control would be? You get somehow get control of the landing lights? Yeah. On your ah. uh, collective, there is a hat. Right. You can control your light. I thought I saw that. That's interesting. Okay, very good. Next, hydraulic systems. We've got some indicators here. We'll come back to them. We've got pressures. Again, this is pretty much guesswork. I'm guessing primary flight, backup flight, and auxiliary landing gear not sure let me know your thoughts times 10 kilograms centimeter squared we've got for the landing gear main or backup system we've got for the just general hydraulics presumably main or auxiliary system landing gear down indicators landing gear up indicators the ability here to apparently turn on or off the gear indicator lights we can't get that to work so don't know let us know your thoughts on that the gear lock whether you want to lock the gear in a certain position or unlock it the gear handle gear down gear up whether the doors are sealed in terms of pressurization unsealed sealed whether the wheel brake is on and let's have a look at these guys quickly so we can maybe determine them a bit better light test zap we've got main landing gear system fail because they're hydraulics obviously main system on auxiliary system on auxiliary system fail okay that's pretty fine next we're going to go to our afcs slash autopilot uh, the first one we're coming to pretty much is our route or route autopilot uh, lots of contention about this some people insist it works perfectly for me i can't get it working whatever i try is that the same with you rc I mean, it is a work in progress and it is not working properly at this time Roger, i've had loads of guys say on my autopilot that is official um, there you go there you go. You would choose a magnetic heading there, turn on your route route, and it would follow that. Whether we want to keep our speed stabilized or not, uh, the, this regard this panel here, the brightness of the lights, it just stops here. We have sort of gone over this, but in terms of the tail rotor, we can adjust the stops to how far essentially you can push left or right, and that's regarding the system here. We haven't got any more detail at the moment or investigated further. Anything you want to add to the adjustable tail stops, I'll see. No. Roger, hover mode is something that works. It uses the AFCS system to help you hover. We can turn it off. Regards to that, we can use on or off at the same time the altimeter hold or altitude hold, you might call it. We've got four channels, stabilization channels for the AFCS. You know, do you want the AFCS system to help you with your? If I can click it, which I can't for some reason. That does normally, there you go. On, off, roll, yes or no. Pitch, yes or no altitude yes or no we have the ability to trim here i've been talking to someone on the internet about how you can actually use that trim to help the afcs settle you in a hover uh, which i've not tried before but apparently that is modeled and works uh two guys down here that are not modeled so we'll just ignore them information on the dust protection the dust protection device is designed to clean the air entering the engines from dust sand and foreign objects during taxiing takeoff and landing of the helicopter on sandy airfields and dusty areas right next the armament panel in fact before we get to do that we've got the anti-torque pad uh, pedals which uh, i call them rudder pedals they do a similar thing to a rudder pedal so there you go uh, we've also got our emergency landing gear drop there armament panel do you want your ranging and this is regards the sighting system to be automatic or manual both are essentially working at the moment do you want your burst for your machine guns to be short long or medium i'm not sure how to quantify that but it is what it is if you want to recharge your guns so if they jam for instance and i think this would be reloading in real life but at least jamming you have three pyro charges here to unjam 
uh, not model at the moment but probably will be at some point uh, left and right do you want your ASP 17 gun sight on yes or no camera for the ASP 17 gun sight not modeled but there you go uh, zero the sight this will temporarily move the floating and the manual sights over the top of each other which we'll have a look at in a bit weapon selector this will allow you to use the weapon and as well as that it will use it will set the sight in the correct mode for that weapon off also used for the Sturm missile the GM30 is the grenade launchers the 762 and the 12.7 is the combined rotary cannon pods that you can have just the 12.7 of the combined just the 7.62 of the combined the internal and it's not truly internal but you know what I mean the 30 mils that are carried by default on the aircraft rockets uh, we'll possibly come back to that in more detail bombs and dispensing pods rockets we want to use both sides or left or right uh, what have we got here we've got the ability here we believe to stop the dispensing pods dispensing doesn't work at the moment at least launcher armed I'm pretty sure this is to do with ground crew not the pilot per se different ways of jettisoning jettisoning do we want to jettison the launchers for the Sterns temporary switches do we want to jettison otherwise jettison stores yes or no if some of those stores can be armed when jettisoning like bombs that you don't want to be recovered do you want them armed uh, when you jettison them next stations these refer to the inner stations on the aircraft per se the inner four stations and they are readiness indicator lights for those stations the rate of fire of our machine gun I, I think it's only the rate of fire for that one there rather than the pods uh, about 2000 3000 rpm I think about 300 400 rate of fire and this is fire control it's a bit like master arm you need this on to engage and fire the weapons next we go up to the ASP 17 gun sight pretty cool piece of kit so reflector glass unlock it and move it up or down as required uh, we've got a cool bit of graphics here the kind of this bit of glass I don't know if you can see it, it might not come out properly but it's a cool bit of thing We've got a green light and an amber light. Now they actually mean slightly different things depending on which weapons that you're firing. But general, let's say we've got, I don't know, guns. Green would mean that we are in auto mode and ready to fire, I believe. And orange here will mean that we are in the, select, we are in the range to fire. Sync. Do we want to sync the ASP-17 with the front sighting system of the operator used for the Sturm system? Do we want to use this ASP-17 in automatic where the ranging and whatnot is done for you or manual where the ranging and depression is done manually uh, both work I would never see any reason why you wouldn't want to use auto if you can that said some weapons can't use auto two types of rockets at least at the moment can't use auto uh, the grenade launchers can't use auto so that's an example of, of why in terms of manual if you want manual control over it we can in fact it's probably best if we turn it on so you can see what I'm actually talking about. If you wanted to depress the reticle up and down, we've got this knob here. You can move it up and down, and we've got degrees there, uh, plus or minus, moving it up and down. And we've got a test light there. We've got uh, either two sights on here. Uh, we've got the fixed sight and a floating sight. Again, you'll have to take my word for it. I'll see if I can. So we've got the uh, floating reticle uh, uh, there. You've got the fixed reticle there. Uh, we've got backup lights, light bulbs, whatever you want to call it, to, for these to shine on both. You've got primary, backup for that one, primary and backup for the floating. We can shift it left and right manually as well. And there you've got the uh, amount you're shifting it right. Thousands of degrees, thousands of radians, not sure. Brightness of the fixed one, brightness of the floating reticle. We've got, what else have we got? Ranging, stadiometric ranging. Hmm, kind of thing that gets me excited. You can range from either of these sites, but for instance, if I wanted to look at this, the way that this changes, where I was just pointing, you see that changing? There, that's how we can stadiometrically range something manually. If you wanted to range something that's 25 meters at 1. I don't know, five kilometers, that's how we could use that. Uh, why you'd want to do that, I don't know, but in real life, that is a thing they can do. A weapon selector panel here that shows which weapon you've got selected there you go so you can see we've just selected the mg30 there um, rockets bombs and whatnot 
Uh, that is the ASP17. Good system, works pretty well, and it appears to be really well modelled. Um, so there it is. And flight instrument panel, it's a biggie. So we start up at the top left with accelerometer. This measures our current G loading, 1G obviously, our historical low, and our historical high, and we can reset that ping there. Next is indicator slash caution slash warning lights set up here, and I'm not going to read everyone out to you because we're just not that level of video at the moment, but if I click that, not all of them come up, some of them come up, and the other ones you can kind of read, and I haven't learned these yet. Assumed control is really interesting, RC. Uh, do you want to go over that quickly? So that assumed control switch, because there's a few of those different switches I around. It's stupid, yeah. Uh, the control disengage button on the left side. Okay, so what it is, is the pilot can disengage this, the operator's controls using the assumed control switch to the upper left area. And what that does is it it allows you to to disengage the CPG's flight controls. Fine. So if they're flying the aircraft and for some reason something's going on up in the operators, you can disengage their their flight control. Maybe it's gone rogue, obviously. It's trying to steal the helicopter. Yeah. There you go. You see? That happens so, in Russia. The pilot can manually disengage the CP, the operator's controls in case of electrical system failure by flying, flying a force of 55 to 75 pounds to the cyclic stick in the cockpit. So there's different ways to do it, but that's what that switch is. Next is, we call it our hover assist. Officially, it's called hover and low speed indicator fed from the DISS-15 Doppler system, which we've had a little bit of dealing with so far, very quickly. It's a system that tells you when we are hovering, or uh, moving over the ground, within, I think, 50 kilometers an hour, if we're moving forwards, backwards, left or right. So if we want to hover in a perfect space over a piece of cargo, it'll help us hover and not move over the ground, left, right or up or down. We have a Speedo here in kilometers an hour, uh, driven from the Pedo, and I've just run out of fuel, but you know what, we're gonna carry on our seat. This guy here is the pitch of the rotor blades. It's our display of our collective. So we move our collective up. Obviously, it goes up in degrees, I'm pretty sure. Yep, in degrees. Uh, next, radio slash radar altimeter in meters. And we have the ability to move this guy here, which is going to be, I believe, when we get our beeping, when we get our warning. So uh, our, our, our warning there. Uh, pretty standard barometric metric altimeter. We've got meters around the outside, not meters, you know what I mean, hundreds of meters. We can set the pressure there in. Oh, guys, is it millibars or is it, again, we haven't got this information, but millibars or, um, what's the other one, metric one? Altimeter is in millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of mercury, that's the one I was, that's the one I was really yep. thinking about. Right, millimeters that of mercury. Good. Next, we've got the RPM of our main rotor uh, in percent, engine RPM in percent, needles one and needles two, engines one and engines two. Next, according to the flight manual we have at the moment, this is a PKP-72M horizontal situation indicator. I'm 99.999% that's wrong. That is an ADI, I'm pretty sure, an attitude director indicator. That is HSI, so I'm going to claim that the manual is wrong there. This shows your attitude. Are you pitching up? Are you pitching down? Are you rolling left? Or are you rolling right? We've also got a slip indicator here, which is you know absolute must for a helicopter and probably a trim yeah and a pitch trim which is completely normal there next uh we've got what i would call a hsi and i think 99 percent of people would call a hsi they call it a heading indicator in the manual with compass rows we've got uh, you know our heading shown here magnetic in the 12 o'clock position currently 270 we've got an indicator needle one which will be driven by whatever source you want it could be driven by the arc 15 it could be driven by the arc uh, u2 uh, we've got a course knob which we can select here for radial interception and you know landing and that is about it whatever arc one is it's not modeled because we can't click on that button next engine power left engine right engine it's got some commands here again none of this is covered i'm going to assume like you're allowed to go that much for so long that much for so long and that much for so long before you blow the engines up that is a guess let me know if you've got any more information on that Next, VSI or VVI, there's no real right or wrong when you are labeling these things, general or aeronautic terms. It could be a vertical speed indicator or a vertical velocity indicator. What we can say is that it shows climb and descent in meters per second. Next, a backup ADI, a backup of that basically in case uh, that one fails and the ability to trim the pitch, which is normal for an ADI. EGT for left and right engines, exhaust gas temperature of each engine in Celsius times 100 degrees 
and there will be a regime that you have to follow as not to overheat. This guy down here, official name is Cruise Speed and Side Slip, side slip Indicator, which sounds about right. This is regards to the ground Doppler system and it is, well, it is what it says. It, it tells you about your uh, drift angle when using the Doppler system for navigation. Uh, I believe it's also going to be important for the movie map and we'll talk about that in a bit. Also notice that we have some uh, knobs down here so ah we can choose between land and sea obviously Doppler needs to know whether you're going over land or sea or probably is modern DCS I imagine also just testing here so uh, we want to test it or have it working next fuel gauges we can just about see I've only ever used just the outer ring so up to 2500 down to zero get down to zero runs out of fuel let's move but it's below the fuel meter uh, ah never seen that Right, what have we got here, RC? Uh, fuel meter test low. Okay, and fuel meter test high. Okay, literally do what they say on the tin. It should show the top and it should show the bottom amount. Next, probably my favourite bit of the hind, and this is why one of, the, one of the many reasons I love the hind so much. Moving map. This is nothing more than, I mean, it may not be paper, I think it's card. Uh, but we've had lots of disagreements with the different members. Essentially, it's a piece of something, and you just slot it in paper put the cover back on and that's it right i mean come on that's find something better in life than that and and you're a good person you've got two versions zoom in zoom out i don't know how that actually works two pieces of paper or a magnifier don't know let me know and the cool thing is it actually tracks your progress with this box thing over the ground is it accurate no it's horrendously inaccurate because of slip because of wind because of the way you fly because of the gyros blah 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 uh, and so you have to use methods like we showed in our moving map video to recalibrate it for certain systems but it's just freaking awesome we can adjust our position up and down we can adjust our position uh, left and right because of the reasons that we said uh, we've got power on or off uh, we've got zoom in and out uh, and I think we have the ability to invert it as well whatever, whatever reason we want to do that anyway I wish all aircraft and DCS were like that and I would have lots of fun. Aviation chronometer, um, watch, clock, whatever you want to call it, with stopwatch functionality and adjust. Ping, ping, ping and yeah very good nice one that is. RWR and appears I've turned it off by accident have I? Uh, da, 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 da. Yes I have. Let's turn it back on. Fada. As far as I'm aware, this is the same or similar to the one in the MiG-21. Um, it's not going to tell you much. It's going to tell you there's a radar locking you. <laughs> That's pretty much about it. Two controls on it. There's the the audio test and also the dial turns. Um, oh, and I'm it? not sure. Oh, look at that. There's like an N and a D at the top. Yeah. And I don't know what that means exactly. So I probably. think maybe oh, near day and night. Distance. Day and night, the boys. Oh, are day saying. and night. Okay. For the That's lights, it. for the light intensity. Got it. Well Makes done, boys. Then it gives you red lights. Well done, boys. Yeah. So red lights, okay. white lights. Very good. Very good. Moving right front panel. This one is going to tax us. A cool switch. I didn't realize we had fuel. Which tank do we want to show in terms of this gauge? All of the tanks together. One tank. One tank. Two tank. Three wasn't aware of that and that is pretty cool light for the map bright dim or off all works fine engine vibration test currently not modeled next credentials of the left engine oil temperature celsius uh, oil pressure same thing with the right engine here main gearbox oil pressure there's the pressure and what we think is the main and the interim oil temperatures don't know enough about the system. Intermediate. Uh, sorry, what did I say? Intermediate, yep. Kind of same over here, but this is for the drive box. So we've got the two temperatures and we've got the oil pressure. Next, let's skip up to the top for ease. Testing the EGT temperature, uh, cold and hot of the engines. So for instance, well, they're hot at the moment. If I were to click on this and hold, watch this gauge here. So we test. Hang on. Okay. That way. I know what the DIM transformer is now when you want. Yes, You're please. Uh, we're just talking about this one here because I couldn't understand it at all, but please go ahead. Okay, the DI the main DIM transformer supplies power to the 36-volt DIM bus. The DIM bus controls the engine, drive system, oil pressure and temperature, hydraulic system gauges, and APU pressure gauge. 
Uh, so what that switch does is it switches your DIM transfer former to the to a backup, so you get your mm -hmm. gauges working again. Roger. Okay, fine. So you got two. So you got a redundancy system there. Regards external sling loading. We don't know exactly what the switch does, but to have external swing loading to work with the various locks working, we have to be in the down position. That's lock extended. And that's all we know. Uh, and if you want auto release on, so when cargo touches the ground, it must be a pressure switch or something. Do we want it to automatically release? On. If so, we've got some lights that we'd like to have a quick look at. There you go. And we've also got temp control and engine governor warning, left engine and right engine there. Which Next is a system that, as, as it stands, I don't have enough to tell you about. We have covered this before in the MIA thoroughly, and it's a similar or identical system to the MI-8. I refer you to go and watch that video. At some point, we will do a video on this for the hind, but it's just not priority at the moment. Next, just some lighting here, uh, panel backlighting, uh, red, rheostat, one and two, you can't see it in the daytime really. And external stores light, on or off here, you need that on if you want these stores lights here to work. And I've just got uh, something from one of our guys regarding these four lights here. The control panel is used to operate and test the compressor, N1 overspeed limiters engine temperature limiters and power turbine N2 Irvis overspeed circuits so there you go now you know next ammo counters over the mini box now I haven't got this to work at all the ammo counters RC have you I've tried it I've tried equipping guns I've tried firing guns Not operating yet but it will it will Roger very Work good in progress uh, medikit <laughs> not working yet <laughs> that time in a video where you're starting to go a bit nuts I think we're starting to reach that value just the seats turn itself on I don't know how there you go right electrics panel here we go first DC direct current power left battery and right battery hundreds of amps why they read zero I don't know at the moment but we'll come back to that left battery right battery do you want them on or off and they're going to be on rectifiers left and right on or off I'm really not sure what rectifier is. Anything you want to add to the rectifiers, RC? No, not specifically. Roger. Uh, APU generator. I oh, see, so that is a generator attached to the e APU, presumably. Yeah, the a APUs usually are have a generator on them. I didn't know that, but I guess that makes sense, because your yep. power's got to come from somewhere, hasn't it? Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Fine. Uh, right down here we've got battery heating on or off I wonder if that's ever going to be modelled because if we go in Siberia or something batteries don't work as we know lead batteries don't work at low temperatures external power if you want to use the external power of the ground crew you know uh, then you have to turn that on so it understands that you're going to do that this one I've never fully understood either power from battery networking to batteries my understanding would be that you are connecting the two batteries together in this case but that is my guess next your all-important voltmeter you have these in, in a lot of the Russian uh, aircraft uh, it is a voltmeter as simple as that and we can test what we want to measure the voltage on put it on battery you're measuring voltage of the battery rectifier rectifier I mean how far this is a model I don't know because it's way above my understanding but it probably is modeled in the terms of you know it shows roughly what everything's showing APU generators to zero because we've turned it off uh, we've got an amp meter here times 100 amps again zero i don't know why everything shows zero amps uh, irc generators in engines produce ac and batteries require dc rectifiers convert ac to dc thank you sir thank you i, I you know what? i should have actually known that myself i don't know why sometimes i just don't think very well well done i'm about to jump on oh it reads zero because it's the apu generator sorry yep and uh and that's why obviously that reads zero still not sure why the batteries are reading zero maybe we're not using the batteries yeah because your rectifiers are on so it's not i think believe because right. your generators are on your batteries are disconnected i get it yeah i get it now okay right <laughs> slowly bodging our way through it uh that's the dc side of things done anything before we move on to r a c r c no right so let's try and get this right we've got the right hand generator the ampage amperage here times 10 amps and the right times 10. Now the generator should be working as far as I can see, as in doing something. So why they've got no amperage? I don't know, but there you go. Where do we want the left generator or the right generator on? One per engine, presumably. Uh, obviously they're gonna be on, otherwise we wouldn't have any electricity. We've got AC 
out here what have we got uh, oh transformers so transforming to 115 volts transforming to 36 volts presumably because different elements here are going to require different voltages right so some powerful motors might need 115 volts some sensors might only need 36 volts exterior power the same thing we've got there the inverters we've got two inverters now i've only ever used the left inverter why we've got another one on the right and we don't use it i don't know but anything to add to the inverters no uh right we've got here our ac voltmeter so similar to what we've got there but for the ac systems uh, to test the various bits i mean obviously i don't know what all those bits are and we've got no manual telling us so i mean none of this is in the manual so this is all pure guesswork as i'm sure you realize values viewers some information from iron wolf there uh, okay i now have the mains to battery wait is that right here mains to battery switch is located on the dc power panel is protected by a hinge guard so i'm pretty sure that's this one yep. right here yep. on the dc power panel yeah that switch is used to provide 27 volt power from the batteries, APU starter generator, or external DC power source to operate the electrical components connected to the rectifier buses. Uh, this one here I haven't seen before. AC ground check cover. Presumably that's going to be something for checking. Let me see if I've got that. I'm just going to continue while I see looks at that. Yeah. Uh, more backlights for various uh, panels, rheostats, red lighting. Can't see it in the daytime anyway. Next, climate control, if that's the right word. Temperature in degrees Celsius, presumably. Uh, we've got different uh, modes here. Auto, off, or hold, cold, or hot. And, uh, presumably not modeled. Um, why would it be? I don't know. Uh, intense, ha <laughs> look at this. Intense heat or, uh, or normal, the heating switch. I would like intense heat, please. Uh, this mode here, blow down conditioning uh switch all i know is you may turn it on condition so there you go cabin unseal switch on or off and we've got filter switch there you go finally ice protection system we've got manual auto and we've never had any reason other to leave it on auto anti-ice off engine left engine right anti-ice uh, windshield anti-ice how much of this is model i don't know someone's gonna have to go out and test it well i suppose but ac voltmeter come on then let's have a go nothing's obviously doing anything uh there we go and we've got another amp meter times 10 there and for s's and giggles let's do the light switch you can see a whole bunch of stuff there that's that's modeled in terms of those indicator slash warning lights you ready for the I would love, I would love it, RC. Send it to you me. ready for the ground check switch? Send it to me, baby. Uh, the equipment connected to the 115-volt bus can be tested on the ground when an external AC power source is not available and the engines are shut down using the inverter. The inverter can be connected to the 115-volt AC bus by closing the ground test from inverters switch. Thank you, The RC. inverter should only be engaged if the external DC source or APU generator is being used to power the DC mains that right mirrors on or off oh this is a new one we've got a cabin air temperature in tens of celsius let's hope that never gets to 70 or our man will be on the way to boiling alive we've got a fan here that we can turn on and off obviously we've got our equivalent of an e2b magnetic backup compass i don't know what the russian variant is called and it doesn't really matter but that's going to be a backup magnetic compass some switches and wires and stuff we've got a uh, lever up there that's not modeled i wonder what that lever is maybe an emergency canopy brake or something a lever there that is modeled that opens the door and everything covered anything you think i've missed in the uh rear i like compartment no i think we got everything i mean as best we can anyway obviously uh that of course brings us through to the operator suite and welcome to the operator seat which is a pretty cool seat let's go into it valued viewers ping Let's start at the top with, of course, our ARC-15. It's a duplicator set for the ARC-15 uh, radio navigation set at the back. And I don't need to show you anything else. It's the same. We've got the SPU-8 master uh, communications panel as exactly the same as in the rear. So we don't need to show you that. But that's that again. Deviation compensator. Oh, how exciting. Again, no information. But I'm 
you're going to be pretty sure that this is for compensating for magnetic variation, RC. Would you have any pushback on that? No, nope. I would say it's probably right. So if you're in the front on multiplayer, do not turn that switch because you'll upset the pilot a lot. <laughs> okay, next, armament. Uh, there are four individual switches, but you can only, I think, do them all at once, which is a weird design, I know. Uh, arm the weapons, disarm the weapons. Intercom, ICS intercom, on or off. I still don't fully understand the intercom system and whether it's how far it's modelled in the hind, but there you go. Fan, of course, we've got a fan at the top right, like the... Uh, the other guy does. Ah, pedal dampener. Just realised we missed the pedal dampener from the rear and I apologise profusely. It is that there. Um, we turn the pedal dampener on. It's a system that, um, in terms of the anti-torque pedals, will, well, as it says, dampen the inputs. Um, it will produce a smoother ride for the helicopter, but especially for the operator who needs a smooth ride to operate, for instance, Sturm missiles. Uh, so it's along those lines of why we're going to need that. Now, why... Oh, yes, and we have a pedal damper in here, of course, because this guy can fly as well. Assumed. We've got... Now, we've talked a bit about the Assumed before, and we're learning as as we're going, but here is Assumed switches for the landing light and the trimmer. I mean, based on what we talked about before, it's pretty self-explanatory, but anything you want to add to these two, RC? Nope. Clock heating. Whether we want to, I guess, heat our clock. Probably not modelled. Uh, dome light in here, white, red, or off, and you can't really see it in the daytime. Indicated test lights, which I'm sure we'll come back to. Um, windscreen spray, not modelled yet at least. Window wipers, as we saw. Uh, windscreen heating. Sorry, I don't know whether it's modelled or not. Uh, we've got a gear control, down at least, here. Why that's in here as the operator, I don't know. Maybe if the pilot's shot, we take control. And we can go land because we then we have a gear button, right? So we've got more backlighting, red backlighting here, rear stats uh, that we can use. We've got a it's gonna be landing light, operator, taxi light. We've got our chronometer there with the same options, it's basically the same chronometer as we had. Are you really recording that stream chat in the middle of this? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would put that on there. You don't want it on that's there. Not, no. Yeah, that's not professional. Off you go. No, that's not what you do right uh, right gear indicators down uh, nose uh, down rear down left down right moving onwards valued viewers this panel is to do with bombing none of it's modeled yet I don't know if we're gonna get it probably will but next operator armament panel we're gonna have some of the functionality we have in the rear plus a bit more uh, dim bright not working at the moment emergency release stores obviously that's what it says can you do bombs pods for me, RC? What this switch does is if you have a mix of bombs and rocket pods, or pods in general on your aircraft, um, when you if you leave it off, when you hit weapon release, it will fire off your whatever you're intending, your rockets, but it will also uh, drop your bombs. So if you flip this up to top, yeah. it will just uh, release the pods and not the bombs. Uh, station, wep uh, station weapon readiness here, indicator as in the back. Interestingly, we can cage gyro 2 here. Can't cage gyro 1, so I'm not sure why that is, but there's obviously a reason for it. Uh, weapon selector, we can have off, which is missile. We can have the, you know, the fixed guns. Uh, we can have rockets, bombs, and the dispenser pods. We can't have the grenade or the other gun pods. Any, any any reason why you think that might be? The operator wasn't really meant to fire uh, those other weapons. It was for the pilot. Dispenser pods, whether we want to start the dispensing or stop the dispensing. Assumed weapon control. So this is going to give us control of the weapon selector. Would you agree with that? Yep. Okay, and we've got assume. Ah, uh, oh, I appear to have misread this one. This one is explosion on jettison. Right. So if that jettisons the stores, this will allow to arm them, uh, the bombs, for instance, when we jettison them. Very good. We have our weapon selected there. You can kind of see rocket bombs, 30 mil, and so on. I want to know what that is there. I'm just going to quickly double check by pressing bar, 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 indicator lights test, and it doesn't work. I don't think it's worked. <laughs> okay. It's probably a gyro 2. It's probably a gyro 2 <laughs> warning light, but there you go. I'm guessing you can't cage gyro 1 because probably the pilot needs gyro 1. I don't know, though. Who knows? Fl quick flight instruments, really obvious. Uh, you know, you indicated your, your speed, your airspeed, your ADI as before, your barometric altimeter as before. 
millimeters mercury, your main rotor RPM, your what we're going to call HSI, I think that's good enough here, and your engine RPMs. Next, we've got next armament panel uh, FDI that says they're ADI on there. We don't know is the answer. I know that is an ADI, and so it may be the power for that. Any other guesses on the ADI RC? No, I don't know what that is. This is our USR power. It's essentially power to our HGM weapon system. And what have we got here? Whether we want the USR in operational or test one or test two. Um, got some lights as well, but the lights, I can't show you them. Missiles, missile power on. Doors and blow. As far as we can see, not modded at the moment in terms of the site. That's all I've got at the moment, sorry, nothing better. Uh, we've got this. Remind me, heating duas. I believe that's your angle of attack heat, but I don't know what that means exactly. Okay, uh, more jetson here. This jetson is for the launchers, for the uh, ATGMs, so the Sturms. Unsure what those lights are there. Testing for the... Oh, look at that. I can test uh, the, the circuit for the uh, jetson, jetsoning the ATGMs. I wasn't aware of that. Very good. Uh, we can reload. It works and up here. Appears to be actually appears to be modelled in the front. I can reload the uh, uh, pyro charges. I can send the pyro charges off for the MG30 in case you get a jam or whatever. Burst length for the same gun, short, long, or medium, and the uh, firing rate, which we talked about in the previous uh, uh, cockpit. And aim unit bore sight test uh, not modelled. Next, we've got. Uh, ba -ba -ba but, I mean, we've got very little information, well, none information on this. This is going to be in use of firing our ATGM, our Sturm missile. We're going to have the system powered on. It's going to indicate, to give us information about what parts of the system are on and all ready to use. We can select a missile to use. I haven't got any on at the moment. You just have to take my word for it. We can have a maximum of eight missiles. Manually, we'll select them. And we have a test lamp there. How about that? This guy, we can't find anything. Sorry for that there. This is our main site uh, for non-ATGM, and it's not functional at the moment. We can't do anything as far as I can see. Do you agree with that, RC? The front site? Great. Yeah, I can actually see a, a little aimer there. I've never seen that before. But That's your manual, I believe. You can just use it, but I don't know how to work it. Right. Okay. As far as we're aware, at least, this is not for use at the moment. Sorry if I got that wrong, but there we go. Our fan up here, obviously, that we can control. I don't think... Oh, there is our uh, Russian uh, magnetic uh, compass back up. Uh, we've got... Oh, 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 this is our main site. Oh, this is our site for our ATGM, our Sturm system, which is really cool. We can actually put our face in it if we've got it set up. Oh, there we go. Look, zap. And can we open the doors? Yes, we can. We can move it about. And I think that's how we aim our Sturm missiles. And we go over that properly. Obviously, in the Sturm video, this is our system of how to actually control that missile. It's not modelled, as in I didn't press buttons on it, but it's just there, modelled for um, uh, graphics, I guess. Just jumping back, I've had confirmation that this is indeed the power switch for the ADI there. Thank you, sir. Next, we've got the countermeasures here. Two of them or four of them. I'm not going to argue about the numbers, but anything you want to add to that? That's uh, interval, not two or four. That's interval. Sorry. That's the interval between Three firing them. And they're actually three and five seconds, aren't they? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Series. Do you want to? F <laughs> now it's. Do you want to fire four of them or sixteen of them? Indicator lights when they're firing left and right side. That's the actual snars button. You'll push to send out the, you know, the charge, the countermeasure. Do you want just left or just right, or the other way around, or both, or none? Do you want uh, uh, set one, set two, or set three? Sixty-four in each. Thirty-two per side each. And we go through that properly in the countermeasures. Anything else about the countermeasures, RC? No, nothing I can think of. Right, this awkward little guy up here. I'm going to try and get myself in position. So this one here, I was just talking to RC about it. The only information that we've got here is that we need GIU power for this all system to work. This is for driving. This is for driving the ATGM, isn't it, RC? Yeah, the aim, the aiming station. The aiming station. So it's to do with the same station here. Possibly also with the link between this aiming station and the rear aiming station, I'm not sure, and the missile. Um, one thing I noticed about this version of the chopper is, is there's a lot of separate modules added in to make the missile work. Like you need this here, you need that there, you need the other little box down there. Then you find that. Or is, is that just me that thinks that? Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, GUI power you need. Observe, you'll need to turn on and off. It essentially lets you view out of the viewfinder, uh, you know, more or less. 
Lights are on and off. I, I can't get it to do anything, but let me know if you can. Can't get that to do anything. We're not sure what anything else does. Sorry. We've got that and that. That's what we're told to press. Nothing else we have a clue on. Down This guy down here, all we've known to press is just make sure when it's ready and warmed up, it will say read, read NS. That's all we've been told. And we can't find any information on any of it otherwise. Anything else you want to add to that, Mr. RC? No, not on that. That guy back there, not modelled at the moment. Cyclic stick. Um, we've got some buttons on it, and you can actually press them. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Got the weapons fire button. Got a trim hat there that you can't press here. We've got the autopilot uh, trimmer button. Not That doesn't work yet, I know that. It says in the manual. You can press some of them. Disengaged. Uh, yeah, you can, but I mean, yeah, you can. You never actually press these, you bind them to controls obviously yeah um, if one. you hit uh, mm -hmm. if you yeah if sorry go ahead one of them is called disengage i've never heard of this one disengage stick cover any idea what that means oh hang on it's actually a cover oh it's a cover <laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> and oh it's called well it's called disengage stick oh it's disengage stick right yeah it's stupid too, right, it yeah they see still with a stick so away. that's disengaged at the moment i couldn't get my head around it. right uh and that looks like all oh, that's clickable on there obviously like we said um, you would. Um, in fact, why don't you tip on take control here? Ta da! Control! Ah, are those our little rudder pedals down there? They are! Look at that! Coolest thing in the world! Hadn't noticed any of this until you actually get time, which we've had none of. I know it's hard to believe, but. Actually, sitting It doesn't look that. very comfortable. You don't think it looks comfortable, RC? Right. <laughs> Collective! Uh, throttle! Throttle! Uh, emergency jets and cargo, tactical jets and cargo, which I can't click on for some reason. Uh, can I? Engage stick, uh, you know, it's the same as... as uh, no, don't have that, and I don't have that modelled on here. Do I have that? No. And obviously it's a collective, so you put it up and push it. In any other controls around here, rotor brake, anything? Yes, well, the rotor brake, I think, and it's not modelled, I can't click on it, and it might not be the rotor brake, it's probably actually a seat adjuster. None of that model down there. None of that model down there. Nothing obvious up there. Got a handle? No, nope. I haven't got a handle. Can we open the door from here, RC? Yeah, you just... Uh, there's a handle oh, on I your Oh, I found left. it, yeah. There's the door. Right. Got that. Back to, the, back to the rear. If I can find the right button. There we go. Put this thing back on. Cyclic. Fire button. Auto trimmer not working at the moment. Uh, that appears to be everything that's modelled on it clickable. Brake. Is that going to be modelled? Yeah, it will brake. And parking brake. But I can't seem to click. There we go. That uh, collective. I've got throttle again here. We've got tactical cargo drop. Emergency cargo drop. I can't seem to click. Uh, read just free turbine RPM. I haven't managed to find out what that does. Um, maybe fine adjusted for turbine RPM, but there's emergency cargo release. <laughs> Friction clutch of the collective. Sorry, I just don't know. Uh, just free turbine uh, might be your governor, adjusting your governor. Well, I've also got a white one that says brake. Friction clutch, friction clutch of the collective. Any idea of him? That may be your uh, collective brake. Oh, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Let me see if I this. But I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Fine. Because where else is it? Uh, okay, a couple of knobs here for adjusting the seat that are not going to be... Oh, is that modelled? No, it's not. That is it done. Right. So I think that is the end to our cockpit familiarisation rough guide in DCS. We're not going to do this again until we get the full manual from ED in a year or so. Because if we just blag information off the internet and convert it from Russian, it's just going to be wrong and just waste everyone's time or anything you want to add to that RC? Nope, nothing to add. I hope there's at least something you learnt from that and we'll see you later.